Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how we can customize workflows. The agenda for this video is to look at what the workflows are, look at the prerequisites required, we will see a demo, and then we will look at what are the guidelines and best practices. Workflows. A workflow is a series of predetermined steps that an administrator can define for creating or modifying an object that CDGC ensures to be followed. Configuring a workflow ensures that the right people have the opportunity to provide input, challenge and approve matters related to the object that is created or modified. These series of steps in a workflow ensure that objects are created in CDGC according to the data governance principles in your organization. Prerequisites. We need to provide permissions under application integration and human tasks services in administrator. The following are the required permissions. Now let's look at a demo. We will be creating the workflows in the application integration service. For this demo, we will create a similar workflow from the scratch in which we need two user roles, one approver and one data steward. Here, uh, upon ticket creation, we can see that um, the ticket will be assigned to the approver who will decide whether uh, to approve, suggest changes or reject the ticket. And then when suggested changes, um, a data steward will act and request for approval after making the changes. Before creating um, a workflow process, we will need to configure human tasks. Uh, in this case, the human tasks in this workflow process are approver human task and data steward human task. We will need to configure human tasks for the users that will be involved in, in, uh, the, in this workflow process. Uh, in this case, one for approval and one for data steward. Using these human tasks, we can configure which users can work at each level. So uh, now let's create uh, human tasks for uh, approver and data steward. So to create a human task, click on new, uh, select human task and then create. To speed things up for this demo, I have already created two human tasks. Let's uh, now see them. First, uh, we have approver human task. We need to provide the human task name. Sorry, uh, we need to provide the human task name, uh, provide the location under which uh, folder we are saving this human task and priority. Under assignments tab, we have three sub tabs to provide the user details who will work on this human task. Since we want this to be configurable in MCC, we will not provide any specific user details except for the administrator role. Uh, we can provide user or role here, uh, which is a mandatory uh, to create a human task. Next, we have a uh, fields tab uh, under which we have input fields sub tab and output fields sub tab. Uh, we only support input uh, fields sub tab for custom workflows. And uh, this is where we uh, can create, we, we will be creating a, a custom search field, uh, which can be used when we want to search tickets in CDGC. We will provide a name and mark this field as required or mandatory. 
Next, we have outcomes tab. This is where we provide all the outcomes of a human task. In this case, if we look at uh, this approver human task, the task outcomes here are uh, approve, changes, and reject. So uh, we have created. Uh, so I have I've created uh, three fields for each uh, of the outcome. And uh, finally, the last tab, display settings. Uh, this is where we provide the uh, task name, which will be the task name shown in MCC and CDGC, and uh, a subject field using which we will search for a ticket in CDGC. We need to map the field we have created before, which is search underscore field. Uh, we will provide the name. Uh, and then we will uh, use this dynamic option to map the field. Uh, yes, uh, so now this, this, when this is done, we will save this. Uh, similarly, we will, we will look at how we will configure uh, the data steward human task. So as always, we will provide a name, location and priority. Under assignments tab, we will only provide one administrator can be user or role under fields sub tab sorry under fields tab uh, under input fields uh, sub tab we will be we will provide a search field which we will later map in the display settings so that we can use it to search uh, the tickets in mcc and cdg sorry in cdgc next we have outcomes tab where we provide the outcomes for this human task. In this case, for data steward, we have uh, approve outcome and reject outcome. I have uh, configured these two fields. And then finally, we have the display uh, display settings uh, tab, where uh, we provide the task name and uh, the subject field. We will save this and uh, and uh, now let's create a workflow process. To create a workflow process, we'll click on new and uh, choose process. Uh, we will now be presented with a design area and a palette from which we'll drag and drop the actionable icons to customize uh, workflows. Uh, for all the workflows we create, we need to have the milestone actionable item as the first step. Uh, this is so that the MCC and CDGC service can communicate with application integration uh, through the milestone reference ID, sorry, using the milestone reference ID when we run the workflows. Uh, as the next step, since we are uh, trying to create this same process, we will now add uh, a human task step in this workflow. So uh, we want to add a prover uh, role for this human task. Uh, so to map whatever human task that we have created already, uh, we will click on this human task actionable icon uh, then click on the human task uh, section from the human tasks property tab. Uh, then we will click on the select uh, button to choose uh, the human task. <clears throat> Sorry. So we will choose the approver uh, human task. We will select it and then uh, we have successfully mapped human task with the uh, human task actionable item to the already created approver human task. So now uh, in this approver human task, we have configured or we, we kind of want uh, three outcomes, approve, uh, suggest changes or changes and uh, reject. So 
we uh, we now need to we now need to make a decision here so we will add a decision actionable uh, icon here and uh, we will click on this decision actionable icon and from the decisions properties we will click on decision section and uh, we, uh, from the fields we will choose task outcome so we are basically mapping this tasks outcomes so for the first one we will map it to uh, approve so copy this from here and uh, I'll paste it and then I'll add another one because we need to add for reject and uh, changes to changes and finally reject yep. so let's zoom out to see the complete view okay so uh, we have we now have uh, all the three outcomes uh, when it contains approve and when it contains changes and when it contains reject and when it contains otherwise and but uh, we want to add another human task uh, when we when when the outcome is uh, changes so uh, again we will add a human tasks uh, configurable action icon uh, and then we will map this human task uh, with the already configured data steward human task uh, that we have created so now uh, for the data steward uh, also we have basically configured two outcomes which is a uh, request for approval uh, which is approval and uh, reject so uh, we also need to add a decision actionable icon uh, after the data steward human task so uh, let me zoom out okay so uh, now the two uh, outcomes here are uh, let's map them first so click on the decision actionable icon then uh, the decision section under properties and choose field to be task outcomes uh, so we basically have two uh, we, i mean we configured two fields or two outcome paths for uh, data steward human task so uh, i'm adding two field values here or path values here uh, one is approval so means just basically we are asking for approval from the approver again and uh, the other one is reject so we have configured these two and we can see the changes getting reflected uh, in the design area section I'm zooming out again so now uh, so we need to map this uh, up approval uh, decision outcome to the approver to do that we have uh, an actionable icon uh, called as jump so we'll drag and drop this onto that particular outcome which is uh, approval and uh, so from the jump properties section we will map or we will we will basically map this jump to the approver so everything now is done uh, we have a, we now have a complete workflow process which is valid so you can also see uh, if a workflow is valid or not right over here uh, if this is not valid it will say invalid uh, let me show that for you i'll just delete it and i'll just add a dummy jump actionable icon here and it says invalid because we have not mapped it yet so let's let me map it again to approver now it says the workflow process is valid we will now save it 
uh, yeah so uh, so we now have a complete workflow process uh, now we need to specify how to dynamically handle the input parameters such as uh, which stakeholders will be assigned to which human task uh, so we want this uh, to be dynamically handled at uh, uh, handled in MCC metadata command center when we are creating uh, events so uh, to configure these we need to provide a, a bunch of fields in the start step of the process so we'll click on the start actionable uh, icon the start step and we will from the properties we will choose input fields so we will create uh, four input fields Uh, to speed things up, I've already added uh, these input fields, uh, which are asset name, all stakeholders, uh, approver underscore role, and data owner underscore role. Uh, so, uh, asset name field, which will be uh, mapped to the name of the asset on which uh, the ticket will be created in CDGC. Uh, then we have all stakeholders field. Uh, which can be later configured in MCC to provide read access uh, to the ticket or workflow for all the stakeholders of a particular asset for which the ticket is triggered on. Uh, we will see this more uh, in action. So next, uh, we have approver underscore role. This is to map which user role will work when workflow is at approver human task uh, step and finally we have data owner underscore role this is to map which user role uh, will work when workflow uh, or when the process flow is at data st uh, steward human task uh, human task role and uh, another important thing to note here is we need to uh, uh, choose the type of these fields as uh, human task assignment for all stakeholders approver underscore role and data owner underscore role And, and now we will save. Now we will go ahead and map these values to approver uh, human task and data steward uh, human task. I'll click on approver human task and then to assignments because we are mapping the user roles. Uh, for stakeholders, we will choose from the value from uh, drop down we will choose field and we will choose all stakeholders uh, field and for potential owners basically uh, stakeholders who will uh, work at this human task we'll choose field and then since this is uh, approver human task we'll choose approver underscore rule now we will save it and we will uh, then now map for data steward so same uh, stakeholders field all stakeholders um, for potential owners field uh, data owner underscore role we will now save this uh, everything is valid uh, and we're now good so one last thing uh, that we need to configure here is to click on start step and uh, start section from this start actionable icon properties and then we need to provide allow 
anonymous access you need to click on this checkbox this is so that uh, when we are uh, configuring an event in metadata command center uh, we want uh, I mean only uh, workflow process we have this checkbox enabled will be visible now we will save this workflow process and uh, as a final step we will publish it uh, yeah now uh, after publishing we can see this process in metadata command center to configure uh, events uh, we are now done with this demo uh, here are a few guidelines and best practices you can refer to the following KB articles on documentation. We would love to hear feedback from you. Thank you.